Hey guys, it is Tuesday evening here in the Philippines and we are going to go ahead and do our other premium unboxing for the week. And I say we because Ethan's here to help me. Hey Ethan, say hi. Hi. Hi, there he is. Okay, so today we're unboxing a miscellaneous variety of I think five or six different manufacturers. But before we get started, I want to give a shout out to my buddy Rick and a whole lot of Zep. Keep forgetting to do this, but I did post a link for his website or his channel and uh, things on my community wall. So if you go to the community wall, you'll find a link directly for his channel and just click on it and it'll take you directly to the video that I'm going to tell you about now. He is trying to give you a majorette Porsche. He's doing a giveaway for his 100 subscribers. So once he gets 100 subs, he's going to do a drawing to give away this Porsche. So go check him out, give him a sub, and get a chance at winning this really cool majorette Porsche. I like it because it's got a surfboard on the roof. Looks kind of cool. Um, so anyways, Rick, hope this helps you out and gets you a few subs. Uh, he does basically what I do. He gives you some background on the cars, has some really unique stories behind the cars and such. So check him out. It's worth doing. So now moving along to Ethan and I's cars. So first we're going to do one for Ethan so he doesn't get too bored and we'll set him loose on his own so he can go and play with one of his new cars. So as I said, we've got a variety of different things. This is the first well, not the first Maisto, I'm sorry. Uh, we've done Maistos before, but this is my first Maisto GTR. Actually, it's Ethan's first Maisto GTR, and it's a police car. Police car. Police car. Yeah, police car. And this is going to be Ethan's. And anyways, I picked it up because the price is really good. It was like $250, something like that here, so not bad at all. Uh, 2009. Nissan GTR R35, cool card art with the GTR and a bike, motorcycle cop, and then on the side it says authority, and at the top, Maisto Design, so pretty cool. On the back of the card, not much except for licensing from Ford, GM, Lamborghini, and Nissan. And then it just says authority, and then it has all of the same picture and stuff on the front, just kind of blue and black instead of black and white. So anyways, let's go ahead and get this car out and take a look at it. Ethan, you want to help me show this one? This one's yours, buddy. That's actually in there. Good car. Pretty cool car, huh? Yeah, it's in this plastic tray pretty good. Good, so let's move this back down here. Wow, cool car. Yeah, wow, cool car. Yes, all right. So, all right, buddy. Do you want to show this car? Here, give me your hand. Okay, so Ethan's going to show you the car. So, there we go. There's the front of it. It has the GTR emblem in the front. Painted headlights, no acrylic. Nice looking wheels though, and it has, I think, rubber over the wheel, but they're not a very big profile, are they? No, huh? So, anyways, then it has the police livery, and it's a matte black and matte white, which is kind of cool. And then clear light bar, left hand drive. What? And GTR emblems, Nissan emblem. Ethan's pointing at the Nissan emblem. Here, Bubba. Here, let me move your hand so we can see the car. Then it's got the wing. Spoiler. Protect and serve. Number 022. And then dial 911. So not a bad looking car for the money that we paid. Screwed down. So if you did want to customize it, you could. It's a little big for 164th and I'll show you that because the next one we'll do is the Mini GT. So the reason I put this Mini GT in this mix up and it is a rare Mini GT because I'm slightly disappointed with the paint. That's why I didn't give it its 15 minutes of fame. But this is one of the rare ones I was looking for. Number 75 LBWK on it and this is actually for a promotional thing for LB Hobby opening edition in I think Nagoya Nagoya Japan 2019 so I guess LB Liberty Walk has their own hobby shop is what I'm 
taking. So anyways, uh, car is nice looking. Love the gloss black with the LBWK livery with that band-aid stripe going around the back side of the car. Looks really cool. Um, on the back side, you don't have much going on here. Same thing as always, Mini GT, the licensing, the age restrictions, choking hazards, and where to find them online and on Facebook and Twitter. I think this price tag is in China or Japan, not sure. Uh, so anyways, let's get him out and get a look at him and I'll tell you or show you what I'm talking about with the paint issue. So anyways. Open this up, we'll take a look at the box, take a look at the car, and such, compare it to the cop car and give the cop car to Ethan. That way he can go and play with it. He's dying to play with it. So, first off, the box. The box, number 75, Liberty Walk, Mini GT, LB Works, Nissan GTR Black, Liberty Walk. On this side, you have your warning, choking hazard, age restriction, collector's model, recommended for ages 14 and older. This side, you have your LB Hobby Opening Edition, Nagoya, Japan, 2019, Mini GT, TSM model, top side, collector number 75. Back side, Nissan licensing, and then where to find Mini GT online, Facebook, and Twitter, and then you have your LB Works... Nissan GTR R35 Type 1 Rear Wing Version 1 Body Kit Black LB Work Livery and the 2.0 LB Works Exclusive. And then that's it. And then as usual, I think this does have the plastic tray as we know was missing on the one Lambo C. Yeah, usually they always come with that plastic tray for the car when you want to store them in the box. Now... Moving along to the car, the car is very nice, love delivery and things on it, so let's tilt this down again and get it to focus in on the car itself, and this, pretty nice on this side, no issues, I thought it was going to have some issues here, but it didn't, it was just like a little scuff from the plastic, top side you notice is beautiful. Love the livery, as I said, that faded, like white going into gray. Kind of looks really cool. Then your typical 4G autos, but this one has chrome ring, uh, trim rings. I can help Ethan down so he can go do something that he's wanting to do. <laughs> so then moving along to the front, same thing that LBWK in gray looks really cool. Acrylic headlight lenses, chrome trim on the grill. You don't really get any type of look at the inner cooler though. It is painted black instead of silver like usual, so that's a little different. The mirrors are rubber, but they are stiff, so you need to be careful when handling it. So moving to this side, this is the side with an issue, and I actually took some Tamiya rubbing compound to kind of fix it a little bit, but as you can see some spots there on the door above the LBWK. And I'm not too happy about that. I expect these to be flat like glass, especially with what I'm paying for them. This one, probably new, would have cost like 10 to 15 bucks, probably 15 to 20 bucks, since it's an LB exclusive. Now, it's a little rarer, hard find, it's over a year old, so a secondary market price. About 30 bucks is what I paid for this thing. So I expected it to be perfect. The seller had no clue because it was sealed in the blister pack, so I can't really criticize him too much. But I can criticize Mini GT for not doing a better work with the quality of the paint on this. But the quality overall is good. I don't know if that's just some kind of uh, like adverse reaction to... The plastic, that's why I always tell everybody, open them all. Don't save them for the next guy. Open them and enjoy them. So there's your red acrylic tail light lenses. Then you have your GTR emblem. No plate on this one. Uh, high wing, as they stated, version 1 wing. Very nice looking car. Same base as usual. Screwed down as usual. So not bad. And maybe I am being a little bit critical on the paint but 
As I said before, I am pretty picky when it comes to stuff like this. So, it's not really that bad. I think the worst part is up here by the mirror, that little rash part there. Um, I don't think it's any kind of zinc rot or anything like that. I just think it's where the paint didn't lay down good, or maybe it did react to the plastic packaging, something like that. But overall, not bad. So now comparing it to the Maisto. As you can see, the Maisto is quite big. Because these GTRs from Mini GT are based on an 09. So this guy here is more like a 160 scale, I would say. So you can see how much shorter the Mini GT is. Okay, Ethan, here. Top car. Go play. Yay. So... Next on our list is another cop car, but this one is for my collection. Say hi, Daddy got a police car too. Cool? Car. Is it cool? Cool. Yeah, Ethan says cool. So, this is your Mitsubishi Lancer oh. Evolution, the 2004. Oh. Uh, so, this is one of 3600 Freak Facts. All evolutions use a 2.0 liter, 2 liter, Turbocharged four-cylinder engine. The Mitsubishi Evolution was manufactured from 92 to 2016. So, and this is your import heat, Street Freaks, Miho exclusive. And on the back side, it just gives you a little bit of details about the cop car. So, from Japanese drifters to European track racers, the rising popularity of import cars is not only from the resurgence of their classic styling, but also due to their historical significance in many popular motorsports. These cars exchange large displacement for high revving engines, lightweight bodies, and quick Spooling turbos. All this is seamlessly merged with excessive horsepower in a small, nimble package, making their performance unique in the automotive world. Welcome to the heyday of import racing. JohnnyLightning.com and where to find them on Facebook and Twitter. Actually, that's where to find um, Miho and the Miho exclusives, blah, 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 and choking hazards and stuff recommended for kids three and older. Uh-oh, Ethan dropped his cop car. Let me get it, buddy. There you go. Okay. You're welcome. So, let's get this cop car out and look at it. So, Mitsubishi Evo. This is the first one I have in my collection, actually. So, this is like a, I don't know, Japanese Mopar, in my opinion. Because Mitsubishi and Plymouth and... Dodge have been in collaboration since, well, the 70s, maybe even before that, but, so yeah, this is why I say it's like my Japanese Mopar. Uh, too bad Nissan wasn't a Japanese Mopar, and it would go in correspondence with my uh, taste very well, because I love Nissans as my JDM car, but Mitsubishi's pretty cool, too. So, a Japanese police car, you can see a Japanese livery, and then police in English. Nice detail on the headlights. They're painted, not acrylic, but still nicely done. The triple diamond thing, I guess is what I would call it, on the Mitsubishi emblem. The Ram Air, or Air Intake for the hood. Your light bar, I'm not sure that's the typical light bar in Japan. I thought they were more like a boomerang shape, but who knows. Blacked out wheels, rubber tires, really cool. Detailed tail lights. Once again, they're tampos. And then Japanese characters. Japanese characters on the license plate for the car number. Metal on metal. And I don't think the hood opens on this one. It may. No, I don't think so, but eh. No, I can't get it open. I'm not going to force it open either. It may open, but I don't think so. So, anyways, pretty cool little Mitsubishi. So, put him here. Now we're going to move along to another car, but this one's going to be an American car, an American van at that. This is from the new set of the pop culture stuff, and I love this van. 
Love hooker headers and love the livery on this van. Love that it's a Mopar van, 77 Dodge. Even the car art's really cool. Always ran hooker headers on most muscle cars and hot rods. They had hooker and headman for the most part. Um, so this van is very nostalgic for me. Loved it and had to get it. Of all the ones in this set, as you can see here, they have some other cool ones. The GMC panel van is pretty cool. But it has the Michelin stuff on it. I had a Michelin van from Greenlight. Greenlight already did that, so really nothing new. And it was a Chevy van also, so kind of the same. Now, another one that I wouldn't mind having from this set, I would take the custom Chevy van, but the Bilstein uh, Land Rover is really cool. Uh, the HKS... MBK van and the Volkswagen is also cool. Not a bad looking set, actually, overall. Pretty cool set. But I got the one I wanted, the Hooker Headers van. Love this thing. So let's get him out and get a better look at him. The wheel choice, the tire choice, everything in this thing is really cool. Ethan, what do you think about the wheels and tires? Tires. Yeah, rubber tires. So pretty cool. And the uh, hearts. How they got him going down at an angle to the hooker, hooker headers, and the door, the burgundy paint looks really cool. The glass top's cool, I guess. It's like a 70s thing, but I would rather hit a hard, like, solid top, but that's the casting, so it's not too bad. Detailed grill. The grill's really nicely detailed on this variant. The headlights, marker lights, grill, everything's really nice. Tail lights are nicely done. Hooker headers across the do rear doors. Dodge emblem on the rear door. Detail tail light tampos. Metal on metal. Really nice casting. Looks like the same diameter. Maybe the fronts are a little bit shorter. A little bit smaller diameter on the wheels. But looks really good. Love this van. Looks kick ass. So, moving on to number four and this will be ethan's other car and this is a little bit big for 164 actually really big for 164. see this ethan cool, cool what color is that blue? blue yeah blue so ethan got a blue gtr with the pandem kit and it looks really cool these usually have a tilt front end on the one to ones and that's really cool too uh they usually cut them right here kind of flipping up like a corvette with that like half cut front fender rear leg thing going on really cool really nice looking car i'm really surprised these jadas are not more popular than what they are they're a little big actually they're really big they're bigger than the mace though actually not much but a little bit so on the back, shows you which other ones came in this set, and they do have some really cool-looking cars, like the Nissan, uh, not the Nissan, but the Honda NSX Type R, the Toyota F1 Concept, the Mitsubishi Lancer, the MK4 Supra, and then another GTR with, like, a ducktail or stock-style wing is really cool, too. So, let's get him out and get a better look at him. And... This car is really nice. And yeah, it is pretty cool, huh? Ethan? And they did a really nice job with like the wheels and everything on this. Wheel choice is nice. The blue metallic is beautiful. The rear mount wing is really cool. This wide body kit I love. It is really a sweet looking wide body kit. Nice looking hood. The details are beautiful in the car. Metal. And I think this is... Maybe it is... I think it is metal. Metal on metal. Because it is quite heavy. Rubber tires. And these are much nicer than the Maisto tires. So let me see that one for a second, buddy. So comparing them... Yeah, even the... Jada is a little bit bigger. So yeah, the Jada I would say is more like a 155 scale. Maybe. Maisto is like a 160. So, yeah, this is very nice, though. Painted headlights, um, but really nice defined body lines, the body kit, the RSR suspension, left-hand drive, number one, RSR, painted tail lights, painted Nissan emblem, really cool. Exiting exhaust like in the center of the rear bumper it looks like 
and I think it is also a yeah, screwed down chassis. So really cool car. Really dig this one. Nice one. Hate to do it, but it's going to be sacrificed to a little Ethan. Here you go, Ethan. What do you say? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so the last one I got for you guys today. This is the last piece I needed for my Christine Auto World collection. It finally hit here about a month ago when I ordered it. Just now getting a chance to show it to you guys. And it's really cool. Uh, and even the card art's really cool. It shows you where it's sitting in Darnell's garage with the primer fender or the crappy fender. Half finished grill and then your painted hood and such where... Where Darnell said kids got good hands but bad taste in cars. I think that's when that line came up. And he does nice work, but something like he does it half-ass or something like that. Or ass-backwards, something in that uh, kind of phrase. But anyways, um, it was actually Christine changing herself into a Mint 58 Plymouth. So, on the back of the card, it also tells you... About the Christine story, George LeBay sold Christine to Arnie Cunningham. Dennis Gilder confronted him. I know about your brother. Arnie would have never bought that car if he'd known somebody died in it. George LeBay then described the disturbing history of his brother's obsession with Christine and the fatal events that followed. With a raise of his brow, he all but told Dennis that the car was possessed by evil. Dennis snuck into Darnell's garage that night to see for himself. It was all true. As you could see, the hand, trees trying to open the door. Then the radio came on. Said you keep it knocking, but you can't come in. It was playing that song. Absolutely love this movie. And I don't know if you guys heard the news, but on one of the horror groups on Facebook, they have stated that the people, I think, that made Hannibal is going to remake Christine. Not, like, modernize it, but just remake it. Hopefully, they do it justice. I hope they don't ruin it. But, yeah, you can see Dennis in the background sneaking in. That's pretty cool. They got it perfect in that scene. So, really cool. So, yeah, I've seen that. So, take a look. Not sure if it's fake news or real news. I hope it's real news because I've been... Wanting to see Christine Part 2 actually come out. And even a Stephen King novel of Christine Part 2 would have been great. But nothing ever happened. Because at the very end, if you remember after she was crushed, the cube, and the guy started walking through the junker, playing the radio, and then Lay and uh, or Lee, whatever her name was, and Dennis kind of freaked out, thought it was the car, but it wasn't. But when everybody walked away, the chrome trim kind of bent on the crushed thing to make you think that she's going to come back. So here is Christine partially restored. The red is kind of dull looking. I'm not sure if they use tampos or if that's actual paint and this is tampos or if it's two different paints. I'm not sure what's going on here. Now this one does have the opening hood. Um, but as you can see on the bottom side, it's not really shiny. So I'm thinking that the red is actually like a tampo. Not really paint i'm not sure on that though but it's really cool that we got this partially restored one not so accurate with the grill and stuff it should have been halfway like restored which is kind of stupid in the movie too because i think the grill is sold as one piece not two pieces but i don't know um I never restored one of these old Plymouths, only old 55 to 57 chevys the tri-fi chevy era so that's why not sure if that's accurate, like him in the grill, like halfway done. Maybe they could have sold it in like vertical bars or horizontal bars, but I don't think you could just cut it in the center. May, maybe, don't know. Don't know much about these old Plymouth Fur Furies and Belvedere's, but really cool. Another nice piece from Greenlight. So nice to add this one and in a week or so I'm going to do another Christine video for you guys to have all the Christines together in one video to do like a part two because uh, my part one didn't have a burnt one or anything like that so we'll add some new stuff to Christine part two so let's move this over so we can get a look at everything and Ethan give me the blue one for a second. 
and that way we can get everything in one last shot. So there's our six cars for today. Hopefully you like what me and Ethan shared with you. And then we will be back this weekend. And as I said, we're going to review like some mods that we're going to do to the channel, some different things. So until then, guys, I left a link here for another unboxing video of some Auto World stuff. So check that out. I'm sure you'll like it. If you have not subscribed yet, please remember to do so. Give me a thumbs up and please share the video. And Ethan, can you say goodbye? Bye. Bye. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you this weekend. Bye-bye.